Welcome everyone, I'm your host Elias Arantopoulos. This time around I will talk about the very powerful tool inside Adobe Illustrator, the Shape Builder tool. Up next. The Shape Builder tool selects edges and regions of an object which can be merged or erased to form a new object. First I will mark you select the adjacent circle shapes and from the tools panel I will select the Shape Builder tool or use the keyboard shortcut. The default mode is the Merge mode in which the pointer appears with a plus sign. As we hover over, each region is indicated by intersections and is highlighted with a dot screen overlay. To merge paths, click and drag those regions, release your mouse and now we have a new formed shape. Now I want to talk about controlling the color styling and where does it come from every time we merge the regions. And we can change that inside the Shape Builder Tools Options dialog box. In this case I will double click the tool or press enter return on the keyboard. The default mode is set to color swatches and since the foreground fill color was set to white the new formed shape also received the same white color. For now I will set this to artwork but we would definitely circle back on that. Now I will undo that, Control Z or Command Z. The artwork option means the color styling comes from the item first touched when dragging with the shape builder tool. So for example if I first touch and drag the red circle then red color styling will be applied to the merged objects. Or if I first touch and drag the yellow circle, then yellow color styling will be applied to the merged objects. Another option that I want to mention is under the selection and that refers to the way the Shape Builder tool draws the paths. The default option is the freeform which lets us navigate around objects without constraining our movement as we drag across shapes. Choosing the straight line instead of freeform gives us control over which objects to select. Now one last point on selecting. First I will target this layer inside the layers panel and instead of using the selection tool to mark you select those shapes with the Shape Builder tool active, I will press and hold the Shift key on the keyboard and that will change to Rectangular Marquee Selection. The next mode is the Erase mode where we can delete regions within selected shapes. I will mark you select all the shapes, select the Shape Builder tool and I will hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the keyboard and notice as I do that the cursor displays a minus sign as an indicator. So holding down the Alt key or the Option key when dragging will exclude any selected portions of shapes. We can also create compound paths with Erase mode by clicking and dragging using shapes within the bounds of another shape. Now let's go ahead and explore more options using the Shape Builder tool and talk about the gap detection. In this case I will go ahead and place those circles close in proximity but with a slight gap in between. I will mark you select all the shapes, select the Shape Builder tool, double click on the tool to bring up the Tools Options dialog box. By default the gap detection is off so I will go ahead and turn this on. Here we have the option of setting the gap length and control how the Shape Builder tool affects shapes that are close in proximity but not overlapping. Select the custom option if you want to provide an exact gap length. In my case I will set the gap length to large. I will click OK and I will start hovering over the shapes that do not overlap. Notice the highlighted area shows that the gap is detected and is considered as a region. 
So I will go ahead and join those all together since Adobe Illustrator finds the gaps only close to the specified gap length. Now let's go ahead and continue exploring more options. In this case, I will marquee select those two shapes and double click the Shape Builder tool to bring up the Tools Options dialog box. The Consider Open Fill Paths as Closed option means if an open path contains a fill color, you see this is an open path. The Shape Builder tool will consider it as a closed path. So when we hover over, the highlighted dot screen overlay is still available, which means we can merge those regions. Now I will go ahead and undo that, Control Z or Command Z, and inside the Tools options, I will turn the option off. When we hover over the Shape Builder tool only highlights the Close Path and ignores the Open Path. Back on the Shape Builder Tools options, I will turn on the Merge mode, clicking the stroke splits the path and turn off the Fill highlight to only focus on the stroke. As I hover over the stroke path, notice how the pointer changes. In addition, we can change the color of the editable stroke inside the Tools options and under the Highlight Stroke Color. In this case, I will set mine to green and click OK. Selecting the Stroke Splits the Path option allows us to split a path into two. So in this case, I will click on the stroke and now a new path has been created from the edge which I clicked. The second path is the remaining portion of the path, excluding the first path, as we can see inside the Layers panel. I will undo that, Control z or Command z and try the same technique on the circle stroke. Again, the stroke has been split into two paths, one from the edge, the other from the remaining portion. Now let's circle back to the Pick Color From option. Instead of artwork, I will set these two color swatches. I will check on the Cursor Swatch Preview and under the Highlight, I will also check the Fill option. When we hover over, that brings up the Live Paint Floating Color Picker. In this case, under the Window menu, I will go ahead and bring up the Swatches panel. Now we can use the left arrow key or the right arrow key on the keyboard to cycle through colors and choose one. Now I have chosen a random fill color. My stroke color is set to this orange and I will click and drag the overlapping regions. Now the newly formed shape takes on the swatch fill color I have chosen and the stroke orange color remains the same. 